When you secured the delay in the exams, did you do that through the professors or through a, a dean or somebody at the, the school? Professor. Just the professor. Okay. And that's who you would call if you wanted to try to get a further extension? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may step out. Hi, Joanne. I think she's done more than 90% of her college students work at this point. Uh, the motion of the defense without objection from the state from 29 is uh, start the project. Thank you, Judge. Was that it as far as those uh, Yeah, that was it. We're going to go back and uh, begin at the beginning. Number 101. Show is having any oh, I'm sorry. issue. No, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry, wait a minute. Hold it. Quite correct. Got a color code in here. It's 102. 102, knowledge and hardship. Indicated uh, by standing up that uh, and uh, raising your hand that service on this jury would cause you hardship. Could you explain for us, please? Sure. There's two different things. The first is that I'm in grad school. Well, I graduated in December. However, I've continued on a project that we've been working on since last fall, and we present to the board of directors um, next Thursday. And I would really like to be there since um, it's been a year-long process of, of doing the strategic plan. The second is that. Um, I work full time, but I also own a business um, with my husband, and he speaks broken English. And so I, I'm the one that does all of our customer service and troubleshooting during the day by phone. Um, and so without that, it would cause a hardship on our, our business. It's, he's a landscaper. Okay. Tell us more, if you can, about uh, the presentation. What, what uh, type of uh, graduate program were you in? Or you I, it was a dual, I got an MBA and an MS marketing. And our project is is, do, is putting together a strategic plan for, um, for a financial advising firm here in Tampa. And that's the, the result, I imagine, of uh, a, a mutual effort with other students? Correct, it's a group, there's a group of us um, there's three of us that were the original members, and we've brought on four others. Okay. If you were selected to serve on this jury, would that presentation, that plan, not be able to be presented? No. Or you would just miss out on the end of your whole correct. effort, is that correct? correct. And I don't mean just. Sure. But um, you wouldn't be able to see your uh, work to the completion, is that correct? correct? Okay. Um, concerning your involvement in, in the business you share with your husband, mm -hmm. if you were selected on a, the jury uh, and would we be required to be down there for the next, uh, what will be the next two and a half weeks now, um, would that result in a loss of income to you or your husband, do you know? It's hard to say because I do feel phone calls um, throughout the day um, if I'm unable to get back to them within an amount of time. Um, for new clients, yes, that could be that could mean loss of income, loss of receiving those new clients. Um, it, it's hard to, to guess 
yeah, I probably could get back to them after five or whatever. Well, but. let me suggest to you what is our usual routine. Sure. Um, there will be uh, a break in the morning, roughly in the neighborhood of 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, the judge usually allows an hour uh, or so for lunch, um, midday, normal time, and then an afternoon break of about 15 or 20 minutes. And each of those breaks or lunch, you would be allowed uh, free access and use of whatever phone you want, just so as long as you didn't sure. uh, go on to the internet about this case. Uh, would that? Do you think that could alleviate some of the hardship concerning yes. your business you share with your husband? Yes. Okay. If you were selected, knowing that you know you're going, you may miss what you'd worked for for well over a year, I imagine, mm -hmm. and you'd have to juggle. Uh, would would you be able to uh, give this case your undivided attention while you're while the case is being presented? Uh, I think it would be difficult, Okay. Uh, honestly, yeah. All right. Tell me about uh, what you've learned about this case from outside sources. You indicated that you had not some knowledge. From media, right, from from websites okay. and, and watching the news. Um, specifically, yes. um, I understood that, um, that depression was uh, an issue, and from what I had read, it, it seemed there was little question as to um, who had done it? Um, again, this is this is what I have read in in the, the media that I have seen. Was that something you saw recently, or closer to the time of the incident in 2011? Recently. Okay. What's important, uh, among other things, is that both the state and the defense get a fair trial, and that the jury determine. Um, the case based only on the evidence presented in court. Correct. Have you formed any fixed or definite opinions about Ms. Schenecker's guilt or innocence as a result of what you've learned from the internet or from broadcast media? No, I've not formed any fixed decisions, no. Okay. Do you have any opinions uh, as a result of what you've been exposed to that you think may affect your ability to serve as a fair and impartial juror in this case? Um, no. From the information I've received, I do have an opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but if I, you know, I not, I don't think that I've seen all of the evidence, and so okay. uh, that's why I can't say it. And what is the opinion that or, that you have at this moment? Based solely on what I have read, that. I believe that she's guilty, but again, I haven't seen all of the okay. evidence. And let me kind of segue with what you've said to a concept that's called the presumption of innocence. Mm -hmm. um, simply what that means is the starting point for the jury has to be, at the beginning of the trial, that the defendant is innocent, regardless of whatever the media has put out there or not. That's got to be the starting point. And that the defendant holds that presumption of innocence unless and until the state of Florida proves her guilt by evidence in court beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. First, do you understand that? Yes. Uh, can you afford and give to Miss Schinnaker her presumption of innocence um, as I've explained it? Yes. Okay. Can you hold the state of Florida to it's burden of proof. In other words, that the burden is always on the state to prove the defendant's guilt. Yes. Through evidence in court. Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Um, as a, as a summary of what you had said earlier, it looks like, uh, with respect to the hardship aspect of, of remarks, um, with scheduling and breaks and things of that nature, you can keep up with the phone. And, and your, for my business, correct. For the business. Um, the primary hardship, as, as it relates to you, would be missing out on the culmination of the work you put in for the last year or two on this project. Correct. 
Um, would the other people still be able to make the presentation of the project? Yes. Uh, would you still be giving, giving credit for it? Uh, I guess you said you already graduated, right? Correct. Um, but is this something you helped create? Yes. This project? Correct. I take you to still get some credit for it? Correct. Part of that is in, is in the presenting. The presentation um, of it? Correct. Okay. Right. I, I understand what you're saying. I just want to clear it up. Sure. Uh, with respect to the, the knowledge that you have from the media on this case, uh, what specifically did you, uh, where specifically did you get your news from? What media are you referring to? Uh, it was Bay News 9, oh, an online article that I read. Okay, and you said that that was relatively recently? Yeah. When, when was that? If you like don't in mind. the last week, I want to say. Just the last week, would yeah. it have been this weekend? Um, this past, just a couple days ago? Yeah, it was just, like, I want to say, was it was between Thursday and Thursday and Sunday. I think it was this weekend, correct? What about um, back in 2011, back when this incident initially took place, did you have any awareness of it at all through media, uh, through conversations, through newspapers? Uh, no, not that, I, not that I can recall. I mean, it sounded relatively familiar, but no details. Okay. And, and the, so the information you have is exclusively recent correct. Uh, version. Correct. And from that, you did uh, develop an opinion that Ms. Schenecker is guilty uh, just from what you read recently? Correct. Or what you've looked at recently? And uh, it's very important, and there's just no right or wrong, that's why you're the only one that can tell us this. Uh, how strongly do you feel that way, and how strong is your opinion? Because you would be asked to disregard the opinion, to, to uh, let the opinion go. And, be able to decide the, the case just on, as the judge had explained to you earlier, just on what you hear in court. Right. Um, I, I feel like I, I base that opinion really on the only evidence that I have seen, and so I feel that I'm open-minded enough to, to know that I, I think there's another side of the story I haven't seen. And so in that, in that sense, I would say it's a mild opinion. Mm -hmm. that you believe out. you could set it aside and it wouldn't cause you any philosophical issues? Mostly. I, like, I, like I said, I, I, yeah, I mean, I would need to see enough evidence, I guess, to counteract that opinion. So I don't know if that means that I'm not putting the opinion completely aside. You're not putting it completely aside. You would expect some type of evidence it, yeah. from perhaps us to show you that you were wrong about your opinion, I guess? And yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's on my, honestly, yes. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, ma'am. You can step down. She's actually going to be in the court. Judge Elwood uh, moved to strike juror 102 for cause. Um, I believe that she is struggling internally with her focus regarding missing the presentation of the project. And I also believe that from the standpoint of her knowledge of the case, she, particularly at the end of my question with her, she, she said she really couldn't put aside the notion that she already had an opinion she already has about our client's guilt or innocence. Um, so I, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with, um, with overlooking that. So I, I feel I'm making a motion to strike her. I agree. She's equivocal on the presumption of innocence. Motion of defense without objection to the state. 102 is not struck. 103 indicates hardship.
in the front row, in front of that second row. Mr. we're going to uh, the board and ask you a few questions. I'd ask you to respond in a real strong voice so we can hear you up here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. You indicated uh, a few minutes ago that you would have a hardship with serving on the jury for the next uh, better part of three weeks. Could you explain that for us, please? Yes, I'm pregnant. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow that I'd like to go to because of some recent complications. Okay. Um, is that an appointment that was made on short notice? This is an appointment that I've had for a while now, but it's one that I was hoping to attend tomorrow no. because of something recent. Okay. So uh, there has been uh, a recent development that has caused you some concern with your pregnancy. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, And of course, you wouldn't know until you got to that appointment uh, whether there was any further complications. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Judge, I don't have any further questions. Any questions? Judge, I don't have any questions. Thank you, ma'am. You can step out. your wife earlier this morning, I guess. Um, you indicated that uh, service on this jury for three weeks would cause hardship. Could you explain to us what that would be? Uh, aside from my wife being compensated for her work, I'm not. I'm also the general manager of a local contracting business, and the building that we occupy has been sold. Uh, it's due to close on the 15th of May. I haven't found us a suitable place to relocate yet, so that that's my primary concern, apart from not being compensated for the service. Okay. It's more for the company side. Can you give us an idea of um, how big the company is in terms of employees? And uh, 14 people. Okay. And is there anyone else in the company who could assume whatever responsibilities that you would undertake in the attempt to move the company and secure uh, suitable office space? No, sir. I'm the general manager. Uh, the two owners are silent partners, and they're not uh, they are not on the technical side of the business. That responsibility falls to me. Okay. And if you were to lose out on the um, income for that period of time, uh, how would that affect uh, you and your family? I make about $1,000 a week bringing home pay. Okay. And how would that affect your daily uh, living? Oh, so I guess what I'm mean. I have savings. I'm we're we're going to be okay. We're not going to lose out. It's an aspect. Well, three thousand dollars. That's a big deal. That's not a terrible. I'm more concerned about the company. I, I mean, the three thousand is a factor, but we're okay. All right. If you were selected to serve on the jury. Um, Knowing uh, what your company faces in the immediacy of the move, 
Uh, would that affect your ability to devote your attention and focus to the evidence in the case? I don't know. Okay. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Um, the building that your company is in has been sold, and that's, that's the necessity to move right away. Is that, yeah, I'm not sure I understood exactly. No, it's okay. We're currently housed in a um, multi tenant office building, uh, and that building has been sold. It's also being repurposed. Okay. So everybody in the whole building everybody has to relocate. Um, I'm not going to be evicted. Uh, I'm not going to have you know office computers and everything like that thrown out on the street. But I need to move every after a certain date, and I wasn't prepared. To, I don't know what that date is, but every point after a certain date, it's now funny. I have to pay. So on top, it's it's more so I'm looking for the place to find us to move to. I don't have to be out by the 15th. I hope I didn't convey that. that that's why I wasn't clear on this one. Was right. I, I am looking for the place where we need to move. So you're um, shopping around for a building right now. I am. I've actually been looking. I wasn't. To, I didn't know that I was going to be this. I, I wasn't overly concerned about a two or three day jury service. That's why I didn't try to to get out of it then. But a three week would that's a that's a much bigger concern for me. I, and this is the first time I've ever moved to business, so I honestly don't know how much of an impact uh, that kind of delay would be. I might actually find the perfect location in two days. I've been looking. And I just haven't found a suitable place to run a contracting business out of. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you, sir. You can step out. Thank I'm going to strike juror number 104 for cause uh, based primarily uh, on the uncertainty of his, his uh, business future and his lack of knowledge of exactly what it is that he has to do to relocate his business. He's got 14 people that he's trying to be responsible for. I just don't know that that rises to the hardship required. With that state of flux that he described, I think the key answer had to do with whether or not he could uh, pay attention and not I did wasn't sure of that and was very critical. So I'm gonna grant the defense motion as to number one of four. One oh five indicates knowledge of the case. Ago, actually, uh, you indicated you had some knowledge about this case from some other source. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, was that uh, something you heard or learned of just recently, or closer to the time of the incident in 2011? Mostly recently. Okay. Was it from talking to folks or from media? Media. Uh, print or broadcast or internet? Uh, br uh, broadcast. Okay. Uh, tell us what you recall hearing. Just the broadcast on the news, uh, Fox 13 News, about the incident. What uh, type of information did that uh, broadcast provide about the incident? Pretty much what the judge covered. 
Okay. Was there anything different than what the judge covered or in addition to what the judge covered? No. Okay. All right. Have you formed any fixed or definite opinion about the defendant's guilt as a result of that broadcast? Not really. I mean, everything's based upon the evidence. Okay. And that kind of leads me to the next couple yeah. of questions. Um, in Florida, every defendant is presumed innocent, simply meaning that the starting point for you as a juror and the entire jury is she's innocent. And that presumption stays with the defendant up until the time that the jury is convinced the state of Florida has proved her guilt beyond a reasonable doubt by evidence. Do you understand that? Sir? Yes. Okay. Despite what you saw on TV, can you still give Ms. Schoenecker that uh, presumption of innocence? I think so. Is there, is there any doubt in your mind? No. Okay. All right. um, can you still hold the state of Florida to the burden of proving her guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Of course. Can you base your verdict only on what's presented in court? Yes. And setting aside whatever broadcast news you saw? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, welcome. Mr. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, can you tell tell me uh, the Fox 13 news broadcast that you looked at? Was that is that the exclusive area that you receive your news in? Is that your favorite? I watch it in the morning, you know, for the weather and you know to be aware of what's going on. Is your memory of how you uh, picked up details about this incident? Is it that it came directly from Fox 13, or were there other sources as well? From the news. Okay, uh, and. You mentioned that, uh, in large part, the details that you learned were similar to the ones that the judge read out earlier. Were there any other details that you learned from the, the broadcast, ones that you can remember and relate to us at this point? Not really. I didn't really focus just on that. You know. And you said that uh, you didn't, and I think you said not really when you were asked by Mr. Printer whether or not you had fixed an opinion, a fixed opinion about this. Well, I mean, you have to see the evidence. You know, okay. Do you have an opinion? opinion? Um, no, I mean, I could be, I could be unbiased. I and mean, I could see the evidence first. So you don't have any opinion whatsoever about guilt or innocence of our client at this moment? I don't know her. Okay. Uh, so you don't have any opinion then about guilt or innocence? Well, I, I don't understand what you're asking me. You've been exposed to some media, particularly from Fox 13 News. So you picked up some details or some information about this incident. I know the media tends to judge people. Yeah. So what I'm no, is, no. In, in the course of watching that or, or listening to it, did you yourself, based on those observations, develop uh, an impression of guilt or innocence about our client? No. Okay, so none whatsoever. No. Okay, and, and uh, you listened to the judge earlier when he was talking about our need to find jurors that can listen to the evidence and make a decision based on that? Yes. Okay. You feel like you're comfortable with that approach to this? Yes. And as, as we speak right now, Ms. Schenecker is, is innocent in your mind uh, under the principle of innocent until proven guilty or the presumption of innocence yes. you're just referring to? Yeah. Okay. You don't have any philosophical issue with that where it's inconsistent with anything no. you've learned? No. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. You might step up. Oh, He's exited the courtroom. I don't have any motion, Judge. No motion from the state. Number 106 indicates uh, some knowledge of the case. Sir. Hi. 
You've indicated that uh, you've uh, gained some information about this case from somewhere outside the courtroom before today? Just that it was coming to trial. Okay, was that from talking to, to people or from the news? No, from the news. When that must have been recently then, is that yeah. correct? Did that, uh, was that broadcast or newspaper or internet? Uh, broadcast. Okay. Did you see that one time or more than one time? Once. Okay. Did they talk about any of the alleged facts in the case? No. Did you see any uh, still photo or visual video image of the defendant? No. Okay. Did anything about that single report uh, cause you to form an impression or opinion about the defendant's guilt? No, not at all. Okay. As you sit there today, can you presume her innocence? Uh, I can't presume anything. <laughs> okay. Well, I understand what's still... I should have started... I should have uh, prefaced that with some additional things. Uh, but I like the answer. <laughs> um, the law uh, that you to, to follow if you're serving on this jury does presume any defendant to be innocent until the state proves that defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. I thought you were yeah, innocent until proven. Yes, sir. And could you do that? Can you presume Ms. Schinnaker innocent until the state proves her guilt beyond a reasonable yes, doubt? Yes, I could. Okay. Uh, is there anything about what you saw on that single um, broadcast that would prevent you from being fair and impartial? No, I didn't. Nothing. Okay. And I, I take it it was just that one isolated event or thing that you saw, is that correct? Yeah, pretty, pretty much that's all I usually watch, just a couple minutes in the evening and that's it. Do you ever recall any other uh, report in 2011 or about the, with the time that this incident happened? No. Okay, thank you. Out of it? No, just that it was coming to the trial. I thought that it was the trial starting, but it was them going to pick a jury. Oh, okay, so it had to be within the last few days? Pardon? This, this broadcast you looked at had to be within the last few days? Yeah, yeah, about two or three days ago. Two or three days ago, maybe on the weekend? Right. Um, and if I understood you correctly, back at the time of this incident, you didn't have any awareness of it? No. No uh, broadcast? No Not videos? Anything. Or nothing? Not, nothing I heard. Okay. Uh, what is your normal source of receiving the news? My wife has it on when I come home from work. Do you know what station she prefers? 14, 9, 9 or 14, whichever. So it can vary? So her, her favorite's your favorite that day? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I usually can't hear the TV, so, because there's trains right behind the house, so I kind of just, sometimes I'll see the pictures and I can't hear what's being told. You know? Okay. Have you ever seen a picture or a photo or a video of our client, Ms. Schenneker? I did just recently, the other day. Just the other day, the one you've been telling us about? Right, right. Was that a video or was that a, a still photo? It was a photo in here, or just a photo that I seen. It was, you know, a couple seconds. Okay. Was it, it was in a courtroom setting? Right. Okay. Right. Um, if I understand you correctly, you have formulated no opinion whatsoever about guilt or innocence. No. And you're willing to listen to the facts that they come to you in, in form of evidence. Yes, I will. Now you may make some mention of the fact that you don't presume anything. Uh, and now that you understand what you were being asked about, the presumption of innocence, are you able to presume that someone is innocent before the trial starts? That's what I would figure. That's what, that you're yes. comfortable with that? That's what I think. That's what you think? Yes. Okay, all right. You're comfortable with that? Yes, I am. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You may step out. Okay.
I don't have any motion, Judge. No motion. Number 107 indicates hardship and knowledge. indicated that uh, service on this jury for the better part of the next three weeks would cause you hardship. Would you explain for us, please? Certainly. It's not for the next three weeks as if it would go longer than three weeks. My granddaughter graduates from high school in Maryland, and um, her father was killed in a motorcycle accident and um, a few years ago, and now her grandfather has esophagus, uh, cancer of the esophagus and stomach. And, um, I already have my plane tickets to go home, but my concern is if this goes longer than three weeks, I, I, my daughter and I are the only ones she has left to attend this graduation. When is your flight scheduled? My flight is scheduled for um, the Monday, the end of May. On oh, the very end of May? Yeah, after Memorial Day, isn't it? Okay, so let me think. Uh, the fifth, upcoming fifth is Monday, so that would be the 26th. I think so. Probably the 26th, yeah, I would think. I, I believe that's... Yeah, I don't have the itinerary with me, but... Of course. Um, it's... Everybody's plan and intent that the trial be completed well before then. Right. Um, what we're anticipating, and of course, there's never any certainty in anything, but uh, we're anticipating that this case should be over by Friday the 16th. Right. Um, and, that, and I understand that, but if her grandfather passes away before her graduation and this trial does go, is extended, that is my concern. Well, I understand That's that. my hardship. No, I understand that, ma'am. But if, uh, if the trial was completed uh, by that end of that week, Friday the 16th, then would that relieve you of that hardship? Oh, absolutely, okay. yes. I just want to be there in case her grandmother of course. dies. No, of course. Um, you've also indicated that you have knowledge of uh, this case or Ms. Schinnaker from some other source. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, was that from talking to folks or was that from the media? Both. All right. Did you uh, get this information recently or Closer to the event in 2011? Um, it was closer to the event in 2011, but then it was on the TV again now about the trial, and then it was discussed on our patio with quite a few of our neighbors. Okay. A very important uh, principle of our Constitution is that anybody that's accused of a crime is presumed to be innocent. That's the starting point of any trial, that the defendant, including Ms. Schinnaker in this case, is innocent. And she is innocent until and unless the state of Florida proves her guilt by evidence in the court beyond a reasonable doubt. Does that, do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay. Can you tell us, well, you heard Judge uh, Battles a few minutes ago give a summary of the, the case? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us any fact or information that you heard from the media or from other conversation about this case that wasn't included in Judge Battle's statement? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you know. Okay. There was, well, I want to know there was that. nothing else that I knew except what he said. And okay. Any other, any other information at all? No. Okay. Did you see any photographic or video image of the defendant? Um, uh, in any of these reports? Um, just um, just pictures when the father was on TV, when they did like a little in memorial on Channel 11. I saw pictures of the children. Did you see pictures of the defendant uh, near the, uh, on or near the day uh, of the incident? Yes, when they took her out to the car. Okay. 
Okay, and what do you recall about that? That um, she was twitching. Her face was twitching. Okay. At that time or since then, have you developed any opinion or impression about the defendant's guilt or her state of mind or whether she was sane or insane as a result of that video image? Of the video image? Yes. Well, it didn't look like she was in her right mind at that time, okay. no. All right. Um, have you formed any other uh, impressions or uh, conclusions about the defendant's guilt or innocence uh, that you hold presently? Um, I don't know if I can say this. You can say anything. That's why we, we want you to be as honest and forthcoming as you can, ma'am. Well, I mean, you know, it, it sort of was on the news that, she, you know, when, it, when she shot them. Okay. All right, but as you, as you know, um, although there is some form of trial by the media, that's not what we're here for. Right. Is, is whatever opinion or impression you have such that you can't set it aside and base your verdict only on the evidence? Oh, no, no. I can base it on the evidence. Okay. Will your starting point still be that she is presumed innocent? Um. According to what I'd have to do in court, yes. Okay, so are you telling me then that despite what you've seen and despite the opinion that you've arrived at earlier, you could set that aside and start from the idea, from the principle, she is innocent, and innocent until the state proves otherwise beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. Can you do that? I think I can follow the facts, but I, I don't know how to answer that question. Okay, it's kind of windy and windy and <laughs> convoluted. I mean, I can follow the facts, but I mean, I did see everything that transpired on Channel 11 News, so okay. I don't know how to answer that. Sure, I understand. But I guess our concern is, see, there's no way for the lawyers involved here to contest or attack or to cross-examine what was out there in the past. Right. And that's why it's so important for us to figure out whether you can base your verdict and your opinion of guilt or innocent at the end of the trial only on what you see in court. And setting aside any impressions you have before. Does that make sense? It does. And, and I, I think I can. I've okay. never been in court before, so I don't know. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Nothing further. Hi, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Okay. Um, you saw the uh, media broadcast back in 2011. At that time, I guess you became aware of the circumstances of this case, at least somewhat? Yes. Um, and I, I guess, did you have conversations with your neighbors and your friends at that time as well, or those more recently? Well, we discussed it then, of course, because we have cigar night every Wednesday night, and that's when we discuss everything that's going on. And then a few weeks ago, um, you know, there was another thing about the trial and everything, so then it was brought up again. And I think uh, included in the uh, montage of things that you saw about this case, you saw pictures of the children? Yes. And I think you saw a video of Ms. Schenneker? Yes. Um, and you made observations and maybe discussed those observations with, with people? Yes. In the course of all that, uh, would it be fair to say that you developed an opinion about this case as to her guilt or innocence? At that point, yes. Okay. And um, is that an opinion that um, you still hold? I mean, I, 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 there's nobody in this world that can answer this question except for you. And that's why we depend on the most honesty you can give us. Um, if you can set aside your opinion, then you should most certainly say so. But if you can't set aside your opinion, then we, we certainly hope you would say that as well. You know, and you're the only one that knows that. I mean, can I just be honest? Sure, that's what we're hoping for. I mean, I think she did it. But, I mean, you're talking differently with facts and, you know, my opinions, so it's very hard for me to answer that. Well, but I could follow the facts in a case and make a decision from what was presented. Okay. I think, it, <laughs> I think I could. You think you can? Yes. And, and in the back of your mind, though, you, you have already a, an impression of this case, correct? Yes. 
Okay, and that's something that's still with you, even if you examine the facts and listen to the evidence? It still would so. be with you? Yes, I guess it would be. Okay, now, well, I mean, that's what, that's what we're asking you today, to tell us whether that's true or not. I think it is. Okay. Um, thank you, I appreciate it. We step out. Judge, I'm going to destroy your juror one, so it's cause. No objection. Motion of the defense without objection to the state one of seven struck for cause. The council we're going to have on back at 8.30, so I'm looking at the clock. I think I probably need to go ahead and uh, send the vote. No objection.
okay, you never see. And the ladies, we'll take the home uh, for today. Let's discuss our, uh, we'll talk about schedule for tomorrow, but uh, first, uh, first I uh, again, appreciate so very much your service and your patience as we go about this very important uh, process. Uh, and so we can continue and, uh, and stay on a, a schedule. We're gonna have everyone back in the morning. But let me go ahead and say what back means. Back means come right out there to that lobby uh, where, you, where you've been here on the sixth floor. Let's have everyone back not later than 8.30 a.m. 8.30 a.m. Everyone's required to be back and it's very important everyone be here on time so it can be considered for everyone else's time. So, uh, if you're not a veteran of getting downtown, it can be a bit of a challenge to give yourself plenty of time. So we'll see everyone at, at 8.30. Now, you know I've given you some very, very explicit instructions earlier. I'm going to remind you of those instructions. And that is, of course, not to discuss this case with anyone, not to allow anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence. And of course, that means not with friends, family members, anyone. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to add to that, that means, and that includes, not to discuss the case with uh, the attorneys, uh, any of the witnesses, uh, the defendant, anyone. Uh, now, I say that to remind you, you're going to see attorneys perhaps sometimes, uh, maybe even some of these attorneys in the hallways. They're not going to be rude, but they're going to follow my instructions explicitly. That means that they're, they're not going to be rude, but they're, if you come up and ask them where a good restaurant is, they're not going to be able to tell you because they're going to be following my instructions very carefully not to uh, have those discussions, so I'll remind you of that. Once again, I'll remind you also uh, not to read nor listen to any reports about this case from any source whatsoever. Of course, not to do any sort of research, gather information, or communicate about the case or the people or places involved through any means, including all those electronic devices. So uh, I'll reiterate all of those important instructions. With that, uh, again, with appreciation for your service and your patience. We'll see you at 8.30 in the morning. All rise. Thank you for coming out. We're going to leave now. We're going to have you put in the box. Thank you. 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 Let's have everyone in place ready to go at 8.30 tomorrow.